Right, here we are with... Here we are with Art of Rally. Um, I have, I must confess, I have played through a portion of a career. But, um, I've reset my progress. Uh, as I think this is something I'd like to share with, um, with my uh, Twitch followers and uh, with the Barrel Rolls community for anybody who's interested in in this game, my take on it, and why I absolutely love it. Um, it is very, very different for me. Um, normally I play in a um, full uh, simulator rig. Uh, normally I would not spend a lot of time in a controller game, but um, I feel like the content of this, the presentation, the art style, and, and the the general spirit of this game warrants my time as a um, as a car enthusiast, as somebody who um, has come to really love Rally. So we're going to start off a brand new career. We're going to um, progress through the years, just like Firewall TX's tour of history for those in the Barrel Rollers community. Um, which I, I think this might have been the inspiration for that um, for that league. And for those of you who are um, new here, uh, we have a Dirt Rally 2 community um, that uh, runs um, a lot of these kind of events in Dirt Rally 2 where you can, of course, use a full simulator. I'm going to leave everything normal and default. Um, so. Group 2, we start off in 1967 with the cars from 1967. Um, of course, being a game from a smaller independent uh, publisher uh, and developer, um, I guess full licensing from the car manufacturers wasn't possible, so um, the uh, cars are uh, given creative names, but we can see by looking at these cars, being car lovers ourselves, we can see what these things are. This, of course, is an Escort Mark 1. Uh, the engines are not quite um, always one-to-one -one replicas of, of what they were in real life. So this is saying an inline four-cylinder 110 horsepower. This would have had a uh, BDA, um, I think, 1.6 litre twin cam engine with a fair bit more horsepower than 110. <laughs> um, the Mini, and of course it's called the Esky, right? The Esky V1, because it's an Escort Mark 1. Um, Ford Escort Mark 1. The Mini, the Mini, 90 horsepower, that might be closer to what these things really were. And we've got a four speed rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated, four speed front wheel drive naturally aspirated. La Montagne, of course, being French, I guess, for the mountain. And we're talking about an Alpine A110 here. Um, inline four cylinder, correct, 100 horsepower. Hmm, maybe we're 1.3 litre versions, but uh, I think in competition spec, they were, they were, they were 1.6, even up to 1.8 in later um, seasons. Um, you can see already I've I've driven this thing 37 miles, eight events. I did like this car. Haven't driven the, driven the Mini. Haven't driven the Escort. Um, Dust 220. <laughs> of course, this is a BMW 2002. Um, again, I feel like a real 2002 would have more than 100 horsepower. But I guess in the interest of gameplay balance, they um, they. Yeah made it a, a little bit uh, less. Um, of course, we've got a 911 flat six. Again, I think um, more than 100 horsepower. That's all right. And the one that really steals my heart is this one, um, a Renault 8 Gordini. Inline four, 90 horsepower. I, I'm not sure about that as well, but basically this car is rear engined. It's got the... Um, uh, the motor from Alpine that was destined to go on to become the A110. So what you're looking at here is like a proto A110. 
you know, the, the next step after the Renault 8 Gordini was the Renault Alpine uh, A110 and the Fulvia as well. Um, I'm going to drive a Renault 8 Gordini because in Dirt Rally 2, which I'm, I'm uh, more, um, I've produced more content for Dirt Rally 2. Uh, I've driven the Fulvia a lot. Um, I've driven 911s. Uh, I haven't driven the 2002 BMW, but I've driven M the BMW M3, the successor to this, so... You know, that's still familiar. I've definitely driven the A110 a lot. I've driven the Mini a lot, and I've driven the Mark II Escort a little bit. So it's a Renault 8 Gordini that we're going to take through this season because it is very, very different. We, we may drive this the whole way through Group 2 as well and this livery number two that is basically how you know the, the, the iconic look Gordini blue with the blue rate the, the white racing stripes across it um, you'll even find um, Renault Clio's up to the Mark III Renault Clio sporting Gordini liveries and they still have the trademark double white stripe running the length of the car this really steals my heart. So let's drive it. Rear engine, the rear engine sedan. It's it's an odd thing, <laughs> but it was very common back in the day. All right. So this is Kenya, I believe, which is new to Art of Rally. Let's get right into it. Now. I have set this up to be as devoid of assists as possible. And I'll show my settings after we've completed the stage, but oh dear, yep, right away, that rear engine, a bit of a sting from the rear engine. The sting is in the tail. It is a gorgeous game. Dust is flaring up. I've got all the graphical settings set to the maximum. So we can see just how pretty this game is. It's slippery. <laughs> Gotta be careful with the weight transfer. This game can absolutely be set up. Even though you're driving with a controller, it can be set up to be very, very sim like within the context of its, you know, somewhat. By simulator standards, of course, the um, physics would be somewhat simplified, but still enough to give you an authentic experience. The Renault 8 Gordini has um, a very very special history in Australia because I believe it was one of the first big champions of um, high-level organized rally in Australia. Really remarkable cars. I've had the pleasure of, of seeing uh, a couple of them in person. Not in action, but um, with the motors running. And I tell you, they don't have a lot of horsepower, but they are absolutely a momentum car. Very entertaining to drive, super mechanical, 
a lot of technology for the time. Double overhead cams, 16 valves, glorious snorty carburetors. And very, very lightweight. Which way are we going right? Oh, one the brake shoe was a little bit squirrely. You know, I'm I don't have a steering wheel, I don't have a force feedback steering wheel this game. Um, I don't have my motion rig going. But I tell you, it's still very, very tense work. Whoa, oh no. Oh, off the stage, come on, get it back. Back on, back onto the track, there we go. Whew. get off the track and the grass can absolutely slow you down, you can struggle for traction. Ooh, that's a big, big crowd. There's a finish line across the line. <laughs> Only five minutes. It was five minutes. It felt like it, 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 it felt like an eternity. We are going to accept results. No restarts are going to be used. Um, Second place, happy with that. Uh, let's have a look at the options that um, I've put on here. So gameplay, okay, but the counter steer factor is the only thing that I've left. Um, I don't know what the consequences of that would be. I, I, definitely, definitely with a with a controller, you need some sort of assistance. Um, normally, that's built in to games like Forza Horizon, Forza Motorsports, Dirt Rally 2. Um, in this case, we can actually adjust it. Um, and maybe I maybe I want to adjust that down, because I feel like it's a bit too much. But anyway, stability assist, zero. Anti-lock braking, zero. Transmission, manual. Um, don't know if there's anything else we can do. Actually, repair puncture. That will be a handy one to remember. I haven't had a punky yet. F2, recover car is F1. Okay. Anyway, we're going to continue. Stage 2 in Kenya. And I believe the 1967 season um, consists of only one location. So this could be the end of the 1967 season, as soon as I finish um, this one stage. But here we go. Continuing with a Renault 8 Gordini. Gorgeous Kenyan sunset. We hang the tail very, very loose here. I I tell you, the techniques that I have learned from simulator driving, from real, real world driving, from other car games absolutely applies in Art of Rally. In fact, I feel like you need to sort of have some of these skills <laughs> to operate without ABS, without traction control. Or stability control, that is. I think it was good to turn the counter steer assist off a little bit. Down a little bit, rather. I think that's helped. Lovely curves. This 
one's a bit higher speed, we've got a bit of a jump. You need to be very, very wary of the crests in Art of Rally. They are a lot more blind from this perspective. And as the saying goes, you cannot brake or change directions while you're in the air. Second place again. How far back am I? Four or five seconds away. And it's behind an A110, the successor of the Bodini. That's okay. I love the names as well. Names I can recognize, Michel Mouton, uh, Bjorn Godewald, Hanu Mikolo, it's supposed to be Hanu Mikolo, just, it's Marco Valen. <laughs> the other names I'm, I'm not as familiar with, if they actually are um, uh, inspired from real life drivers. Oh, whoa, 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 I just saw something. Puncture, puncture, animal incident. <laughs> oh, Marku, poor Marku. Incident with an animal. Rally results, okay. That's cool as well. Overall, I was 24 seconds behind. Overall. And what is the leaderboard? Uh, must be a friend's leaderboard. Righto, okay, we will continue. And that is the Rally Kenya. I get second place. And I feel like that's 1967 season done. Maybe. It is. So next will be 1968. Again, one rally, two stages. But um, I'm going to wrap it up there for now um, and see how this goes um, and perhaps continue this as a series. Um, so for now, thank you for watching.